Obviously, just want to start off by thanking you guys, thanking you guys for for what you do. I know it's a long year. I know that we have our uh, you know ups and downs, but we spend a lot of time together. You know, I respect the job that you do. I hope that you respect the job that that I try to do. And um, I want to thank you. And I know there's a lot of travel involved, the schedules, COVID protocols. You know, days we go in the bubble. You know, days that we're on Zoom. So. You know, thank you. Uh, thank you for sending our message to our fans, Jimmy, uh, and everybody else. Um, Mike, thank you. Uh, with this loss, how do you go about deconstructing it to see what has to be done to, to you know, take this team to the next step? Well, we've won a lot of games. You know, we won, you know, 34 games or whatever we've won in three years. You know, but we haven't won a playoff game in two years, and that's. Uh, and that's when you have to be at your best. And um, I think in, you know, Saturday night, we there were glimpses of it, you know, just not consistent enough in, in all three phases. Um, so, you know, we will work um, and to improve, to, to make sure that, that when you do play playoff games, you're at your best and doing everything that we have to do to, to take care of the football, to tackle, to, to cover. Uh, to, to, to be able to convert on third down and you know, continue to, to affect their quarterback and, and all those things that you saw that were there at times, just not consistent enough. Ryan and Derek in, in these two playoff losses in two years haven't played to the, to the level that they played in the regular season. You consider that the two-game aberration ill-timed or a problem? Well, probably, um, you know, we've always said that your best players have to play good in this league for you to win. And then that goes without saying. Um, we've always felt that way, you know, as a player, you know, and especially as a coach. So um, when you're talking about skilled players, especially guys that are responsible for the football, um, you know, they need everybody. They need everybody around them, uh, you know, to succeed. So I think that that's a byproduct of, of everybody. But your best players have to play good in order for you to win. Is this the season that uh, Todd Downing had for you guys as offensive play caller? Um, I think Todd does a great job. I think he's a great. I think he's a great coach. I think he's a hard worker. You know, and um, you know there were there's always going to be calls you'd like to have back. There's plays you'd like to have back. Um, but but I don't evaluate things. Um, you know, I try to try to see how guys communicate with each other. The players. Uh, are we all on the same page? Is there you know, good communication? Um, how do we do on third down? How are we doing in the red zone? And you know, things have to be better in all three phases each and every year. But um, you know, I, I I love the relationship that Todd has with the assistant coaches and the players, and you know, we'll all continue to improve. Yeah, what, what about in terms of uh, the relationship with Ryan? Do you think that Ryan has suffered at all losing Arthur and going to Todd this year? Arthur coaches for the Falcons. Transition from Arthur to Todd, though. Do you feel like there's any diminishing effect at all? No. As far as your involvement in the offensive uh, part of the, the team, that, that phase, did you have the same level as you've had in the past? I'm the head coach, Teron. I've got operations and got, got, a, got an ability to go into every meeting and talk, and, you know, I enjoy those. enjoy it a lot. So, um, yeah, I wouldn't say that that's any more or any less. Is it, you know I mean, is that something yeah, that you've... That's what I was curious, like, I know no, that's a part of the game I think I enjoy. I enjoy being able to, to again, try to have input, but also allow coaches to coach. And if there's something that I think that we should do or I want change, then we change it. But I'm also not, you know, an expert at every single scheme or, you know, run game. I know what I'd like to do or say, hey, can we put this in? And then we work to put it in or, you know, I try to give ideas, but, uh, and I enjoy that. I just had to be conscious of how many ideas I give, you know, because they have to take it to the, to the players and then make sure that it's installed. And again, we've been through the process of what has to happen when you put a bunch of new plays in, you, you have to be able to block it or be able to have to line up and play it on defense. Final message, Mike, uh, to the team, and how difficult it is because you well, know these guys I, I'm, I'm obviously proud, Jim, and, and I take this um, 
this opportunity to, to, to coach in this league and especially coach this team uh, very seriously. Uh, it's an honor, uh, but, I, but I am proud because you, know, you come to work and you get to coach men that, that care, that are tough, that, uh, that play extremely hard, that believe in our culture of uh, effort and toughness, uh, about putting the team first and, and about winning. And so uh, I'm disappointed but I'm not discouraged because I know the type of the people that we have here. How close is this team to winning a Super Bowl? Right now, not very close. In a lot of Ryan's interceptions, they seem to come in bunches. Is there anything you can pinpoint as to why that might have happened? No, I, I you know I just I don't know if there's a trend. You know, I mean, I just think that you know we have to we understand uh, how how great you have to be with the football, whether you're carrying it or throwing it, uh, taking care of it, uh, it's paramount. And when, when, when you lose the turnover margin in the way that we did um, at different points along the season, it is, it is really, really hard to win. And uh, that's something that we're going to have to evaluate how we, how we are coaching and just making sure that everybody that has the football knows um, how important it is to, to the success of the team. Disappointment is there with every playoff loss, but talking to some of the guys Saturday, it seemed like they were almost surprised by this one because they all said there was such a focus and intensity last week, and they thought they did everything right to play well. Do you feel the same way, and does that make a loss at this time of year a little bit more head-scratching than maybe last year or the AFC title game two years ago? Well, I mean, I think we're going to win every game that we play. That's that's my approach. So, um, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm, I guess that they – felt that way. I, I didn't feel like we, you know, I thought we always had good preparation, good focus. Um, and, and again, we, we kept the game we played the game in, in a manner in which I thought that we we needed to, you know, to, to keep it close and we, you know, come back obviously and kind of felt like our type of game where really thought we would get a conversion, call timeout, you know, have 23 seconds. And one time out, you know, to execute those situations that we've executed all year and, and, and kick a field goal to win, and it, and it didn't happen. The offensive numbers were, were obviously down, as you've talked about. How much do you factor injuries into that whole situation when you evaluate it? How important was that? And I guess how important was just it's, a, it's a... It's a large part of it. I mean, you know, the... Um, you know, the pass rush looks a little better when Simmons and Autry and Landry and Butter out there, so as opposed to me, you, Jimmy, and Teresa. So we'll, we'll factor in the, the, who's out there. You know, the X's and O's are great. The Jimmy's and the Joe's are a little better. Yeah, offensively, is that what you're talking about? Yeah, I about? mean, you're going to factor in who's available, who's out there, what, uh, you know, what, the, what, the run, you know, what the run game looked like based on how we were blocking, or was it a, a great cut? Did we not block three guys and, and somebody make somebody miss? Or was it just a really well-executed play by everybody having the guy blocked? And the one guy we can't block is the post safety, and he made the play 15 yards down the field. Or uh, did the protection break down, and you know a guy that we were you know, counted for, you know, just beat us? But then injuries are, are going to be part of who's out there doing the work as well. You scored 17 points on opening drives all season. How, how much is scripting? better starts, uh, but maybe an off-season concern or project? I, I think that the, the scripting is, is as important as the execution. That Russ said not right now, not very close to Teresa's question, but you won 12 games. Well, we're out of the it. tournament, so we're, we're, the Super Bowl will be next year, and then I'll figure that out when we get there. But right now, we're a long way away because we have no chance to win the Super Bowl. Projecting forward, I mean, do you like kind of what you have built and – like I, I think that the, I think that we've got some guys that I love coming to work, and I would be disappointed if um, they they weren't with us next year. And and I just I love the, what they're about. I love the how they prepare, how they compete, um, and, and I think that that what these guys believe in is they believe in the team. And they believe in playing a certain brand of football about effort and and playing physical and uh, playing together. Priorities in, in particular, Mike, you know, as, as you look ahead, I know it's only been two days, but 
priorities that you say I'd really like to improve this area, this area looking forward? Um, I, I think we're probably a little bit too soon for that. You know, I think we're just trying to to work through some of the the sting of the loss and you know get these guys in here today, get them checked out, you know, meet with them, and uh, you know then John and I will have you know discussions and, and things as we enter into free agencies and, and players that, that have contracts that are that are expiring um, you know what what the players plan are to, to go and, and try to improve in the offseason you expect the coaching staff to come back mostly intact for next year uh, we'll have meetings on that throughout the week and you know that's some other things I'll have to put into uh, consideration Considering the production you've gotten from incoming offensive linemen do you and John, will you and John kind of reconsider the, the process for choosing in the draft and free agency? Um, I think we're always trying to consider or reconsider or evaluate how we acquire players, whether it's through free agency, whether it's through the draft, um, you know, and then, and then what we're doing, you know, to develop them. It's, it's a whole process. What do you think Dylan's future is next year? Where do you want him to be focusing on? Just in, improve and, and continue to to do what he did this year and continue to uh, get stronger at this level, continue to you know, work on uh, you know, speed off the football, pad level, everything we'd ask anybody else to work on. Tackle. Offensive lineman. As far as, as, far as the quarterback situation is concerned, like, what is it about Ryan Tannehill that you feel should make him the quarterback next year and in years beyond? You got elite toughness. You know, we have to be great um, around him, but he's shown signs of, of accuracy, of decision making, uh, to, to the ability to extend plays and to scramble and, uh, you know, and, and, and leadership. You know, so those are all things that you look for in, in a quarterback. and. You know, Ryan showed us that. Unfortunately, uh, you know that uh, you know, we turned the ball over on Saturday. You overcome so much adversity during the season with the record number of players, and then on Saturday probably at your healthiest in Nebraska. And yet Saturday happened. But how do you explain just the difference in being able to overcome that adversity and then being never easy, but easier, I guess? Not we turned the ball over three times or whatever we did, and you know, didn't get. You know, got one turnover on defense, gave up big plays, didn't cover kicks very well, had a penalty on special teams. That's kind of how you would explain it, right, Emily? It's like all the things that we talk about, whether you, know, you got injuries or not, those are things that get you beat. Special teams. Mindset, is there a mindset or a mentality that goes along with that, too, or is it plain and simple execution in terms of? Uh, a mindset. Like the mind, every time you try to go out on the football field, you know, you're trying to uh, to do it with the, at least most of the guys. I think I hope I try to do it with a physicality and a demeanor and an effort. Um, if you, I, I've never seen a, a mindset that wasn't what I felt like it should be. You know, it's um, you know the great thing is is when you decide to do this. Um, you know, you you have to be willing to to understand that when you, you can do your best and you can work hard and compete, and sometimes you lose. You know, we made mistakes that forced us to ultimately end this season. Um, but we, you know, we're not gonna, we're not gonna second guess. We have to evaluate and, and make sure that we learn from, from those mistakes. And, uh, and, that, and that's why I love doing what I do. Do the fill, Mike. Has shown you any kind of consistent progress uh, week to week increase. Yeah, I mean, there's times where we had plenty of tackles inside the 20. Uh, had a big return against Pittsburgh. You know, I could go back and, you know, we made a bunch of kicks, missed one or whatever we missed, you know, I mean, at the end of the Jets game and, you know, we kicked the ball well. It just, you know, I'm not sure, like, we've had plenty of good special teams plays and, you know, the Nico tipped a field goal or whatever he's done. You know, we just have to, you know, be better uh, in a lot of phases. Mike, Rashad, we were doing as far as like trending to be involved in your off-season program. There's rehabbing. 
I mean, I'd, I have to get an update from Todd on how it is today, but I see him in there every day, and they're working hard, and, you know, we'll see whenever the off-season program starts. But, you know, those were, those were guys that were working in training camp, start the season, and uh, had injuries, and hopefully they can – take a big step with the, the rest of these young guys uh, when they're healthy. Mike, while you remain confident in, in Ryan as your starter, kind of the team's leader moving forward, would you like to see maybe the quarterback depth be, be bolstered, maybe someone kind of behind him that could, can, can push him? Or I think we're trying to add the best depth at every position that we possibly can. As you looked at the film like of the, the three picks, did you have any different take on them than you did right after the game? Did you see anything different than when you were talking to us? After no, the I mean, I think it's, uh, you, know, you know, we got to do a better job of taking care of the football. They, they made a couple plays, and, you know, again, we, we know that, that when we go out there and throw the football, we have to, we got to be precise. The receivers have to help us. Quarterbacks got to help us. And, that's where it is. A lot of success with sort of a different offensive strategy than a lot of teams, more run-based. I mean, with the personnel that's returning, do you envision sticking with that, that theme for the most part? Or We'll do, do whatever think we think gives us the best chance to win right now. You know, right now we're not there. I mean, we haven't. You know, we'll go back and evaluate every run and look at its efficiency. We'll look at every pass. We'll look at every screen, every bootleg. Same thing on all, uh, defense. Were things at the right depth? On the first pick, the first play. Were things at the right depth, and shouldn't there be some kind of receiving option that pulls Bates toward towards the middle? It didn't seem like there was anything tempting him. Yeah, we were away. trying to max protect, and you know, again, Bates came over, and made a really nice play. You expect him there to get, uh, obviously get himself in a position to, to pick up where he left off when he comes back in camp and. Just find out anything more on Foreman from what you've seen from the, what you saw from him this year. Uh, I'm sure Derek will work extremely hard uh, to get himself ready, like he does every off season. Uh, Deontay, you know, well <clears throat> has an expiring contract, and we'll see, you know, how that fits in uh, with what we're going to do going forward. Those are conversations that John and I'll have. But you know, he was he was fun to coach. You know, he was um, you know did a nice job for us, and. Uh, Certainly, you know, made the best of his opportunity. Is there any your evaluation and you look at an NFL record number of players used due to injury? Do you look at that and say that's just an anomaly of a weird year, or is that some level of concern as you evaluate what you want to do moving forward? Concern for what? Just how do you do playing pro football? Play, playing pro football and having guys get hurt? Sure. Sure. Then. I mean, I don't know what, like, who do, you, who do you want me to fire based, we had 91 guys. I'm just curious. I'm not asking you to fire anyone. Okay, because that's always the rhetoric. Listen, we feel like sometimes the rules may force you into a little bit of, you know, using the three-week IR where maybe in the past you wouldn't have put a guy on three-week IR. So sometimes I think those get skewed with COVID and, yeah, we had – Injuries, and we used 91 guys, like you said. But you know, I just didn't see anything, at least right now. And we'll identify, you know, whether training camp is too long. We try to build in recovery days or regen days, and um, you know, when guys come back in May, you know, it's we have to. We don't have them year round. There's no mat drills next Tuesday. You know I mean, we didn't lose our bowl game, and then there's mat drills at six o'clock in the morning. We're, some of these guys may come back and. In June, you know, so our job is to evaluate what their conditioning level is, making sure that when they go out there, um, you know, they, they can protect themselves and they can finish a practice and, you know, and you know, making sure that we're taking doing everything we can based on the guy's age and, you know, how many snaps he played and, and a lot of things. But it, it is a long season. You know, I mean, this long season with where training camp is and that break between the last game and the first regular season game that we were conscious of and, you know, the bye week being late. So, I mean, yeah, we had a lot of walk-through practices and I mean, we're going we're gonna to look at all that stuff, but, you know, I just don't know what the magic recipe is to avoid, you know, some of the injuries or guys getting COVID. You talked about guys' time away and how it's on them and maybe hinted that, you know, everybody doesn't do everything they can to come back 
right. How much you hammer I, that home. I, I don't hint anything. Well, how much you hammer home this time away, June away, we need you to, to do things that ensure that when That's you're back. That's their responsibility as a professional athlete, you know, is that they're maintaining a, a level of conditioning and that they're working, um, you know, just as hard now that they have a job as, you know, they did when they didn't. Was that part of what went wrong? In what? what in in the slew we... of hamstring injuries in, in, in your soft no. tissue stuff. No, it's not what went wrong. I mean, who, just ask me about an injury and we'll go through it. Well, Julio Jones had a hamstring from five minutes yeah. after he got here. I think there was probably, you know, a, a lot of factors that went into that, you know. So we'll, we'll see where we go next year with the injuries and we could have another conversation. How, Mike, how after you the game, you said uh, that you're going to be the coach here for a while. Has there been talks about your contract status in the future? No, or I, I, I'm, I'm under contract, Teresa, and I just – my belief is that I will be here. I want to be here. Um, I want to do the best job that I can for these players that put so much into it. Um, that's just kind of how I felt. You know what I mean? I just want to – I don't want to be anywhere else, and that's just, you know, kind of how I, I, I said it. And I just want to make sure that everybody knows that uh, you know, this team, is, you know, we work hard and we're going to compete and we have to improve. You have to improve each and every year. Um, you know, and that's, uh, you know, we're always going to put the team first. How would you assess the overall performance of the offensive line this year? It seemed like there was some inconsistency there. And now you got some guys who are starting to get some age on them. I mean, I think that there's a lot of things. You know, I mean, when you lose, I mean, there was a lot of great play, a lot of great protection. You know, sometimes uh, you know, there's a lot of inconsistencies. And our job is just, you know, try to improve the overall consistency and making sure that whoever you are each and every day is that person. You know, and it's, the, it's the dips that you mentioned that probably are hard to account for and making sure that, you know, whoever you are, you show up and you be that person each and every day. And it, from a performance standpoint, most especially. Henry injury, Mike, I think, I think I remember you at the time saying it wasn't certain whether wear and tear contributed to that injury or not. Did you get any more certainty on that? And if it did, does that factor into him in the future? No, I mean, I, I didn't get that sense. I didn't get that sense from, from any doctor or anything. You know, I mean, it's... I think he's fully healed, and I know he's fully healed, and you know, I'm sure he'll have a great off season, and and we'll try to, you know, use him to help us win football games. How are you going to remember this season and the men you have in that locker room? Um, you know, there was just so many ups and downs, and I just really think that, you know, the the stabilization that some of these guys provide for us, you know, Ben. And Ryan, you know, Kevin, Jeffrey, Harold, guy, you know, I mean, this, I know there's other guys that played every game, but, you know, those guys were out there each and every week. And I'm, I'm going to leave some guys out, but, you know, those, those are the guys that stabilized this thing and, uh, and helped us. They were able to flush losses and flush victories quickly move on to the next challenge. Uh, but, you know, we fell short. We, 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 we played hard, we competed, and we made some mistakes, too many mistakes. And uh, in the end, you know, we'll have to be better. Mike, how, how did you see Lawan progress from the beginning of the season to the end, and especially in terms of you know, coming off the ACL and getting more into form? Well, I mean, I think, it, I think he did OK. I think he pass protected OK. I think that, that was probably the strength of his game. And uh, you know, there's a lot of things that, that he can work on and that we'll coach him through. You were kidding about too many sacks. Yes. That we had too many. I don't, we didn't have enough last year. We had too many this year. I'm not really sure. You guys? Nobody said you had too many. Oh, you. OK. I, obviously, I was joking. I, you know, I mean, I think somebody said, I don't know what we were referencing, but you know, I would have liked to have less you know, missed tackles, like to have more interceptions and as many possible sacks as we could get. You know, those are things that that lead to, to good defense. You know, being able to affect the quarterback, being able to continue to 
stab at the football. That was a number that was greatly increased when you look at the emphasis that we put on it in the off season, not only the study, but the emphasis that we put on it uh, on the field. I felt like it showed up and, uh, you know, it helped us we have to continue to try to get the football. You know, that, that to me is, is what's going to take you to the next level is being able to turn the football over.